Hey, welcome back. It's time for the next Using Emacs. It's been quite a while. I don't even remember the number. We're up to 20 something. Um, I'll probably, this will probably be kind of sparse. I'll do this. I'll probably, um, I probably won't be on a regular video making schedule for a little while because we're heading into the end of the semester now. A lot of stuff going on. Um, I haven't been able to make too many videos in the last, uh, well, it's been kind of quiet for a while, uh, mostly because of some big exciting things going on at work, which unfortunately I can't share with everybody, but, but soon it'll be up on my blog as soon as I can, so anyone interested, um, it'll be there. So today I want to look at a couple of packages um, that I don't really use too much, um, but again, but they're really useful when I do use them. One of them is called Projectile. And Projectile, um, it's, uh, it's really um, uh, Bozar, uh, Vatsav, I can't pronounce the name, I'm probably not doing it right, but but he is really, really awesome. Um, if we look, this is projectile, but um, he's done a lot, a lot, a lot of really, really cool Emacs stuff. Uh, you can just look down here at some of the stuff that, uh, that he's put together. Um, the um, Anyway, we we'll just go through this, but but projectile is really, really, really useful. Again, I don't use it nearly to its full abilities, but um, but I like it a lot uh, to configure it. If we just go to, well, I'll start by showing what it basically does is it lets you, um, it gives you a set of functionality so that you can move between projects. And if you keep Emacs up all the time, this is a fresh install of Emacs. If you look at our buffer list, though we don't have too many buffers up right now, as you can see, because uh, I wanted to start out clean. But um, you end up getting a lot of buffers open from a lot of different projects, and, and it gets kind of messy. So if you want to switch between files and projects, it gets to be kind of a pain. Um, but Projectile makes it a lot easier for you to do that. So what we'll do, the prefix for it is Control-CP, and um, it, I have which key going up. So one of the things you can do, and it, you'd have to go through the help uh, to get to the right option here. So let's go through that again. Uh, P to switch projects. So I'll do switch projects, and we'll see that these are the projects that I have active right now. Um, Nifty, um, EmacsD, class code, and um, my blog. And if I go to EmacsD here, um, I can go to my init, oops, myinit.org, and if I go to projectile, um, I don't really do much here. I just set the completion system. Um, I'm also installing council projectile, and um, I turn global mode on. Um, and I can do my normal control CF to find files, but if I do control C, well, I think let's do that again, control CF, and this is everything, but if I do control C, whoops, control CP, which is my prefix for for projectile F. Now it's only going to bring up the files in that directory. Now admittedly there's a whole mess of stuff in here so this doesn't really help me in this case, um, but that's already a little bit of help there. Now let's switch to another project. Um, CP, um, CPP, let's switch to, uh, I don't know, let's Let's switch to uh, nifty assignments here, and these are the things, the files in there. And I can bring up a file from there, and now I do CPF. And again, I'm only, I'm restricted to these projects. Um, I can also do things like uh, CPS for search. Hit the wrong key, sorry. CPS for search. And I can use, as you'll see here, S for AG, or I can just grab it. And so I can do, um, let's look for answers. And it's just like using, um, you know, Council AG within the project, and it's restricted to within the project. And so I can go, uh, that's an index HTML, I can hit enter to go to whatever other file I want, or I can come back. Really, really nice. Um, other things, let's go through the menu a little bit, control CP, a couple other nice things from this. Um, if you want to do dered, I buffer, so just give you the buffers for the project. Um, console projectile. Let's just go to the next page of it. Um, you can see these pretty much. I mean, there's, uh, you know, kill buffers. One that I like is occur. Um, I forget the keystroke for that. So I'm looking for it. Oh, I think that was off of the four keystroke. Um, 
No, it wasn't. Okay. Let me see the CP. Oh, for occur. And let's just do answer. And that does the occur thing. So now I can go into here and I can go, let's go to this file. Let's go to this file, etc. Let's quit. Whoops. Let's quit from that buffer. Really nice. And then if I want to switch to, oh, I don't know. Let's switch to, um, let's switch to back to emacsd and myinit.org and bang, I'm back in business um, for my configuration files. So it's a really, really nice way to navigate around projects. Now, how does it know what your projects are? Um, well, if I go into the .emacsd directory, you'll see there's this file called projectile bookmarks um, ELD, and that has all of the projects that, are, that you're right now are active and the way you make a new project it's really easy all you do is let's go to let me see if I can find one I'm just doing a regular find file uh, Dropbox source code I think um, Java no, Java and Cypher and let's go to cipher.java. So, okay, I have this file here, and that's great. So let's do CPP, and let's go back to nifty assignments and CPP. And now all of a sudden, it's there. It knows. Well, how does it know um, cipher.java? Um, it knows... I'm going to wait till the um, siren goes by, so just uh, bear with us for a second. How does it know? Um, it knows because it looks in your directory for um, things like a .git. If it's a Git repository, it treats it like a project. Uh, you can also create a .projectile file in your um, in your project in the root of your project, and it'll treat that like a project. Um, so you can look at the full documentation here. So it's you know basic setup. Uh, interactive commands, ignore files, etc. Really good documentation here, which will tell you everything you have to know. Um, but it's a really, really nice package. So the other one that I want to show you is something called Dumb Jump. So let me let me switch projects back to Emacsd and Dumb Jump, which I have installed. And Dumb Jump is um, a great package for someone like me who's working in a lot of languages with a lot of tools, but nothing too huge. Um, and it doesn't matter to me if things are a little bit slower. Um, it's fine, because I'm not doing such big stuff. Dumb Jump basically uses AG to give you kind of tags type behavior. Now, on a previous video for C++, I did um, GG tags to search around in C++ files, but Dumb Jump basically takes care of that. So let me show you. So here's the installation here, and I haven't done anything special here. Um, so what you can do here is let's go to, let's switch projects to a C++ project. I have a C++ project um, here in class code. Um, and where is it? So yeah, here it is. So that's fine. And all I have to do is, um, if I do, I map this to Alt-G, I forget what it's mapped to, G? No, it wasn't that. Uh, oops. I'll just do a regular um, change buffer there. So even though I'm in projectile and I can use the projectile change buffers to restrict me to this project, I can use all the regular Emacs command. So that be Control-G or Alt-Meta-G, J. So let's go here. So if I do Meta-G, J, Notice it picks up the files where this is declared in poly.cpp, and I think it's metagp. No, I don't have that. Um, that isn't bound. The default bindings for project uh, for dumb jump. Sorry, um, these are the bindings here. The default bindings. I just copied this configuration. The default bindings is meta alt p to jump back to where you were. I don't know if that. Yeah, so meta alt p brings us back to where you were. Really nice. Um, but you can also, if you, um, let's go to, let's switch projects again. Let's go back to nifty because that's a Python assignment. And so if I'm here and I do control or uh, meta g j, ah, save the file, I mean the same just there, meta g j, and 
I can do the same thing here in a Python file. And zero configuration, it just works. Another thing you can do here is if we go to the myinit.org, um, you'll notice here that it has a config you can set for Helm or Ivy. Uh, so let's actually run this. And let's go back to um, app.py. And now if I do metagj, notice that it picks up using IV type completion down here in terms of the jumping. So that's another really, really nice package. Zero configuration or very little configuration basically works right out of the box. Um, projectile help you navigate, help you keep things clean. Um, so you feel like here, if I go to like, um, I forget the CP, let's look at the I buffer. I forget the I buffer, notice that it's only giving me the I buffers for this particular project. Whereas if I do I buffer in general, it gives me all of these. So it really is nice to contain it. So that's a couple of really nice Emacs packages. Um, so I hope that you're enjoying um, this latest installment, finding it useful. Um, I hope once the summer rolls around, I'll be able to start making some regular videos again. And that's it. So, uh, you know, if you like it, uh, like the videos, um, you know, uh, leave the comments. Um, I love the fact that I'm getting to know some of you out there uh, through the comments on the blog and on the video. Um, and that's it. So take it easy. Bye-bye.